I have to reach the peak of the mountain soon. It's getting late. Oh, what's happening? Huh? Where am I? Greetings, Team Skyrunt. You have entered the world of Pokemon Infinite Fusion and have to finish the mission of conquering this candle, which has witnessed the power of Pokemon Fusions. Wait, I was climbing the mountain to reach Team Sky's Kanto headquarters just a few seconds ago. Does that mean I'm in some sort of parallel universe? Yes, you are absolute right. And you have to complete the aforementioned mission with flying type fusion only. Transporting to Oak Slab now. Oh, okay. I guess I'm the later now. I chose Torchic as my starter because it technically looks like it might be able to fly, nicknaming it Blaze. And then I immediately went to fight my supposed rival. He is the one trying to destroy the skies by pollution. What? We gotta stop him, Torchic. Ember! Again! Good job, Blaze! Then I completed the errand given to us by Professor Oak and started our catching spree. Catching a Fletchling, Bidoof and Azuril. I used the DNA splices to make our very first fusion. This cute little bird fusion of Fletchling and Torchic. Then I entered Viridian Forest and destroyed its entire Badish and Paras population. Turn. Turn man. Can't you hear? Turn. Okay. Ready? One. Two, three, go! Whoa, a pit tick. That's a flying type, right? Pokeball, go! Nice. Okay, then I went to Pewter City and after some training, challenge Brock Steel type gym. What was the plan to beat Brock? Ember. Steel Jr. was more tanky than I expected and it wouldn't stop tickling, copying, and confusing me. But in the end, Blaze emerged victorious. And then after some hard fought battles, our Pokemon evolved. Pulitzer the Pitic evolving into this cool looking Pitchtick and our first fusion evolving into Fletch Buskin which wasn't custom and I was sad but then immediately the next level it evolved into a better and custom Fletch Buskin which is fire fighting but you know Team Sky's policy allows you to use any Pokemon that can technically fly and Blaze even has wings so yeah. I forgot to record the triple fusion attempt part so we just moved straight to Cerulean where Skykiller our rival came back to avenge his defeat but he was no match for our super strong squad of just two Pokemon. Wait, what happened to his starter? Was he so angry of his loss that he dumped it or something? Whatever, it ain't my business. After crushing our rival once again, I decided to catch some new Pokemon to help me complete my mission faster. So I caught Ethan the Egg Hood and fused a Fletchinder with a Fletchling and then evolved it into a... Normal Fletchinder? Oh, and Ethan evolved into this super cool fusion as well. Now I was ready to face Misty and her Ice types, which are quite scary to me and my flying types really. I lost her twice but in the third attempt Ethan and Blaze were able to clutch out a victory. Ethan paralyzed his Manras and Blaze could come in and double kick it out to give us our second badge and then we continued towards Bill's house. Oh, thanks for the congratulations. What? You want me to join Team Rocket? Nah, I'm gonna pass on that cause I'm a part of a better evil team called Team Sky. So get lost, I need no convincing and now I'm just gonna defeat you and prove that Team Sky is a better evil team. The battle was pretty easy for the most part but I must say Ethan did paint to his echo sadly but other than that the battle was pretty uneventful. Ok, continuation time. When I entered Bill's house I witnessed him doing something crazy and weird, human and pokemon fusing. So I advised him to stop wasting his time and do something more productive. Then I snatched the SSN ticket from him because he forced me to help him and then went to the SSN but Skykiller followed me there as well and this time it was a bit more difficult. Not because he had become stronger, but because I wasn't fully healed. Ethan fainted to his Ninyar after defeating his Cotton Nings, and then I lost Blaze and Falcon to his Solo V, but Pulitzer managed to clutch out the victory in the end. Phew, that was scary. Then the ship's captain needed some good old fashioned back rubbing, and I was obliged to help him in return of the ever so important HM cut. Time for Lieutenant Surge. After digging through some trash cans for over an hour that is. 
You really are a vision man, aren't you, Serge? I decided to make it a challenge and used only two Pokemon, Ethan and Blaze. Why? Because he was a fighting type gym leader. It was tougher than I expected because of his ace hound late and me forgetting that I had no flying type attacking moves on the two chosen Pokemon. Ethan paralyzed hound late after flinching twice to bite and then it fainted to provide a safe switch in for a starter which wasn't even a flying type. Then fire spin stalling helped me to defeat his last Pokemon. Thank goodness we finished his gym in the first try itself because of his absurd and nonsensical gym puzzle. Now we of course move on to Celeron City but before that I caught this Drifloon and immediately fused it with a Azuril that I had caught somewhere to receive this amazing little goofball or goofy balloon I guess. However while traversing through Rock Tunnel it lost its custom form as it evolved and hence we chose to fuse Drifloon with Delibird and it definitely did not disappoint. Next we fused our newly caught Murkrow with our newly caught Castle to create this super goofy fusion which sadly lost its custom form when evolving so instead I fused Murkrow with Sneasler to get Wait, is that a Puss in Boots reference? Now then, after completely forgetting to rename my new fusions, I entered the Lavender Tower for no actual reason but my rival had the same idea and so a battle was ensured. And the pretty in un uneventful and easy battle ended soon though Pulitzer and Ethan did faint to his GOV. Then I nicknamed my new Pokemon as Air Balloon and Boots respectively. Now on the run to Celeron City, I went straight to Erika and with her to the sewers to destroy the other evil organization who are trying to be as good as Team Sky and have named themselves Team Rocket. Such foolhardiness. I and Erika then managed to find the scary kind of a leader Giovanni to whom Erika lost somehow but I challenged him thinking that I could beat him. And that I did, indeed, but it wasn't easy. I could only win due to spamming revives and super potions so you can understand how tough of a battle it was. First I tried to dig his poison dark haunting only to realize that it had levitate and taking heavy damage from its sludge bomb. Then I accidentally clicked horn floss so boots fainted. And then I sent air balloon which did decent damage with two drill packs before falling to sludge bomb. And then I sent out Ethan who almost air slashed down all of Hauntsing's HP but there was a sliver still remaining and Giovanni used his max potion. And then I paralyzed him hoping for some paraplin cheese but he used swagger and confused me and I ended up hitting myself in confusion and then did some damage with air slash before falling eventually. Blaze then came in and ended the reign of Hauntsing with a single fire glitch. Next came Kekroar which almost went to just a single brick break but since it survived it dealt some massive thunder punch damage to Blaze. However Blaze's flame body was activated and so Kekroar was burned and the burn damage was enough to take it out. Then came his Smeargar or so I thought and it easily took down Blaze with a dark pulse. I sent out Pulitzer next not to deal any damage but to revive Blaze and Boots. Then after Pulitzer fainted, I sent out Falcon which at this point was literally just medicine fodder and so I fully healed Blaze while it fainted to a single bar gem. And then I sent Boots to deal some damage on Smeargar but then I realized that it wasn't Smeargar but Doshian. Not that it mattered much anyways though. Now since Boots survived, I decided to heal it up again and again even after the actual Smeargar came in and then also revived Air Balloon and Ethan as well. Then eventually after some more heal spam, Boots finally fell and Ethan came in to crunch the Smeargar into oblivion. However, the Smeargar pulled an Uno reverse card by using the Shea Bond and so Ethan fainted as well. After that, Air Balloon was sent out to battle against Ocean, which emerged victorious due to a Dark Pulse flinch so I had to send out Blaze to finish off the Ocean with a single Brick Break. Then Blaze evolved into a non-custom form but that was fine since it had to evolve once again soon. And Blizzard 2 evolved into this non-custom abomination so I had to find something to fuse Pidgeot with ASAP and that I found in this Rotom and Pidgeot fusion which honestly looks like Rotom fan with a Pidgeot color scheme and face. Nicknaming it Electric Fan. Next I fused Challenge Flame with Eevee to get this adorable eagle Pokemon nicknamed Falcon and then I evolved it with a Water Stone to create this super cool fusion. Now before taking on Erika I decided to evolve Blaze and thank god I did cause it turned into this awesome fusion which isn't flying die but remember Team Sky's policy. 
Then of course we went to Erika's gym and fought her. Now Erika's bug types were no problem for her flying types and blades, obviously, but her type skill was actually quite a problem since it had flash fire. However, Falcon easily took it down with some water pulses and then Electric Fire in the pit tomb finished off her last Pokemon. And then I went to save Mr. Fluji. Not because it was a good thing to do, but just because I could not let Team Rocket kidnap smart people like him and strengthen themselves. However, I realized that they had got what they wanted already and I was late. Sheesh. Anyways, he gave me a Poké Flute and that was perfect. Why? Because I needed to play it as chilly as possible to make that snow lack blocking the path. Hey, you don't have to attack me. We can settle this peacefully. No? Okay then, take this. Why did you have to live that, huh? Now, after dealing with that, I went to Fushia City and immediately to its Safari Zone to catch some Pokemon. I caught Ninjast and then got the HM for Surf. After that, I caught a Scyther and several other non-flying types for fusion purposes. Now, it was Koga time. And how did it go? Not pretty well, I must confess. Blaze immediately fainted to his Amtera aka Rio Roar, but Air Balloon came in and managed to finish it off with 3 drill packs. His next Pokemon, V Flame, immediately took down Air Balloon, but Falcon came in and we both started doing some probably deadly acrobatic stunts, cause Falcon had only a sliver of HP remaining after that and his V Flame had already fainted. Then came out his Hunch Boy. Falcon fainted to it and Ethan came in. I started reviving and spamming healing potions then, hey, I'm just a grunt, don't be too judgy. Anyways, Falcon eventually fainted but Blaze came in and fainted Amtera with just two brick breaks, that was a close one for sure. Now we had to go to Saffron City. As I was heading to Saffron City, some Team Rocket grunt tried to stop me but I destroyed him and continued to Saffron City only to realize that Team Rocket had taken over the city. No, I could not let that, nah. So I entered the Silphco building cause I had this gut feeling that Giovanni was there. But Skykiller stopped me and I started to think whether he was in cahoots with Team Rocket. The battle was pretty easy, Falcon basically swept through his team with some help from Boots and Electric Fan. Boots took down the only major threat in his team, the Ryukyuan with Fall Play and then Falcon came in and managed to finish uh, the rest of his Pokemon. How? By spamming Muddy Water. Oh, and performing some dangerous acrobatic stunts in front of his Niniar to celebrate, I guess. After we lost, he surprised me by teaming up with me and then we saw Giovanni harassing the CEO of Silco. Jeez, our boss would never treat any person like that. I think so at least. Anyways, then we initiated a double battle against him and this time the battle went much smoother than before since I had to use only two Pokemon in the end, them being Electric Fan and Falcon. Even my rival used Riordan and Vimsire only. Electric Fan was quick to fall along with Vimsire, but Falcon and my rivals Riordan managed to easily take care of the rest of Giovanni's team. I kept spamming Muddy Water with Falcon while my rivals Riordan was mixing things up with Dark Pulse, Shadow Ball and Psychic. And that's how I defeated the waste of a team leader once again. Haha, <laughs> then I went to battle Sabrina and her fairy types. I thought Ethan would get this time to shine as he was a poison type, but sadly he could not be the MVP after taking massive damage from a hyper beam of Sil Lotion. He managed to take it out with two sludge waves. But then the ghost fairy type Drifrill was sent out, meaning it was only taking neutral damage from sludge wave. I thought I would try some flint cheese using air slash, but she used her max potions to heal up the absolute tank of a Pokemon. Because of that, Ethan wasn't able to finish off her Drifflil, which eventually took me down with a Shadow Ball. However, Ethan had brought down the tank of a Pokemon to very low health and no way you healed again, you... Air Balloon came in and tried to Shadow Ball its HP down, but she swapped out Drifflil after taking two Shadow Balls into this adorable Maroki Fusion, which did not have disguise. Air Balloon managed to bring it to half health before falling to a Shadow Sneak and play rough. Air Balloon really wasn't strong enough at this point. Anyways, Falcon came in and saved the day once again with its acrobatic stunts. But then she sent out her last Pokemon, Clefflix, which was Steel Fairy type. I used Muddy Water while she used Cosmic Power and after two more Muddy Waters, the badge was ours. After defeating Sabrina, I moved on to Cinnabar Island and entered the Pokemon Mansion. So then I eventually found Blaine and made him return back to his duty as a gym leader. After that, I immediately went and challenged him and his psychic types. 
I started off with electric fan while he started with his clink far egg. Electric fan was taking massive damage from Zen Headbutt and because of that electric fan fainted without doing almost anything despite getting two omni boosts from ominous wind. Boost came in after that and immediately took down the weakened clink far egg with a single foul play. Then came out Alazor which I tried to damage using fly but Blaine being psychic switched out into his tanky Togeniclus. Then came the scariest part. His Togeniclus set up using calm mind and then button passed the boost to Alazor. Boots spent to poison damage and I sent out air balloon to shadow ball it down. But Alazor one shot my air balloon. Then came Falcon and she literally saved us. After surviving a sludge bomb, it managed to take down the boosted Alasar with two acrobatics. His Xano was also vanquished after four serves. Then his last Pokemon Togeniclus was KO'd with a single serve. And that was the seventh batch. Just one more batch to go and as I was thinking about that, I saw some Team Rocket Grunts trying to steal some boat and go somewhere. Which is Mount Ember according to this scientist to catch Moltres. Since it's a creature of the sky, I surfed and followed them to the so-called Mount Ember. But as I entered Mount Ember, I realized I was too late. They had almost already caught Moltres while I was too far away. Then I realized I, it wasn't just Moltres that they had now caught. They had caught all the three legendary birds. No, I have let down Team Sky. Giovanni was now fusing them together. Oh no, I had to stop that or else I would not be able to call myself a Team Sky Grunt anymore. Giovanni thought he was invincible now with Zapmon Kuno, but I knew I could not allow him to mistreat the majestic legendary bird like that. I knew I had to do my best to stop him. And it seems like my Pokemon did too. Electric Fan and Boots chipped away some health from the Articuno and Moltres head before falling using Electro Ball and Fly respectively. Then Ethan came in and Sludge waved some HP off all the three birds and poisoning the Articuno before falling. After that came Air Balloon who managed to take out the Articuno head with Drill Peck before falling as well. Blaze are only non-flying type Pokemon then Blaze kicked the Zapdos head twice to bring it to very low HP. After that Falcon came in and managed to finish off Giovanni's ego once and for all via two serves. And we have prevented the torture of the legendary bird successfully and stopped Team Rocket once and for all, I suppose. And then I caught Articuno, Zapdos and Moltres because they are creatures of the sky and then new fusions time we made three new fusions keeping blaze falcon and ethan still in the team the first one was an aerodactyl zapdos fusion which was so duppy and cool and then we fused arcanine with pidgeot to get a griffin awesome right and then finally we fused Hunch crow with sylveon to get this super fusion with the amazing type of fairy flying so our final team which we will be using to finally conquer Infinite Fusion Kanto is Ethan the Arbok Noctowl Fusion, Falcon the Vaporeon Talent Flame Fusion, Blaze the Blaziken Talent Flame Fusion, Shocker the Aerodactyl Zapdos Fusion, Griffin the Arcanine Pidgeot Fusion and last but not the least Macau the Hornscrow Silverum Fusion. And with our new team I went to battle the last gym leader who was Giovanni and his normal types not again. The battle was not easy this time sadly. Blaze managed to take out his first Pokemon with a couple of sky uppercuts and then fell to his Pori Lurk. Macau came in and managed to finish off the Pori Lurk and dealt massive damage on Smeargar before falling. Then Griffin took out Smeargar but it fainted with it due to Destiny Ball. After that Shocker came in but it couldn't do much before falling as well. Falcon came in and served Q Khan twice. Then I max devoured Blaze to deal with his final Pokemon while Falcon fainted. Blaze however came in and barely survived an earthquake but managed to finish the job and gave us our final badge. Now I only had the Elite 4 and Champion to defeat and then I would finally be able to return back to my universe. I entered the Elite 4 and now faced Lorelai and her water died. She was harder than I thought though. Ethan was doing pathetic damage with Mud Bomb so I switched out into Shocker but she too switched out into a Kingdrio. One discharge later Kingdrio was no more. Then Blaze Earthquake Swam Ray into Oblivion but Polyleon took him out along with Griffin as well. Falcon took care of her funny Gyaraku fusion and even her Pirimuku and Melotino with a combination of Acrobatics and Signal Beam.
Next was Bruno and his rock types. Ethan succumbed to his Tyra flame immediately but Shocker came in and managed to finish it off but later fell to his Octis Charge Ice Beam. Blaze came in and finished off Octis Charge and then Falcon took down Merorior with a couple of surfs. Then his Krayre managed to defeat Griffin but Blaze came in and earthquake the crap out of it. Macau then night slashed his armor tops while his last fusion Probodon was vanquished through the combined power of Blaze and Falcon. Next up was Agatha and her poison types. Her Clefraid fell to eat him after which Blaze came in and took down her Chronos. Shocker then took down her China Bok and even her Dust Plume with Discharge. Her last two Pokemon, Amzing and Mo, were taken down by Falcon Surf and Acrobatics. After that, Bird Keeper Land was the only one left. I respect you, Land, since you use flying type, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna go easy on you. And yep, Shocker, Blaze, and Falcon just annihilated his entire team. Haha! I can now finally return. Wait, what? Skykiller has become the champion? No way! Now I have to defeat him or else I will never be able to return back to my universe. So the stakes of this battle were sky high. Shocker did massive damage on Ninyard before falling to his luxury art boost fusion, Ares or Retaliate. How did he manage to even catch God? And that too, one that is level 69. Whatever. Blaze managed to KO the God fusion with a combination of Sky Uppercut and Earthquake despite his heal spam. His Haxman fell to a single moon blast from Macau and even his China Wild with Night Slash. After that, he sent out his Triple Fusion, Totarneon, who allowed him to do Triple Fusions, huh? However, Falcon, the true MVP of this run, managed to take it out with Style via Acrobatics. Then his Durion also fainted because of Falcon as well as his final Pokemon, Ninyard. And I became the champion of Pokemon Infinite Fusion Kanto and could finally return back home to my universe. And it was all because of my Pokemon. I am sorry, but you have to wait before you can return back to your universe since you were too slow. Wait, what? I was too late? I need your help to return to so subscribe and like the video. And now what?